Hi, my name is Thais Gibson, and I'm the creator of the Personal Development School. This is your daily breakthrough video, and in this video, I want to talk to you a little bit about whether or not a securely attached person experiences jealousy in relationships. So I know a lot on this channel that people ask about securely attached people sort of as a model for like what relationships should look like, what a healthy relationship should become, because sometimes we grow up in a household or in a childhood where we literally get very limited modeling of healthy relationships. And then on top of that, we don't really get many good resources in our upbringing. It's not like relationships, communication, emotional regulation are things that are taught in schools and, and that we have support around a lot of the time. So it can be really beneficial to sort of look at like the securely attached version and, and sort of have this model that we know we want to build momentum and move towards. So my answer to this question is, Yes, securely attached people can absolutely experience jealousy. Securely attached people are not robots. Um, they don't like <laughs> become secure and then all their problems melt away forever. But what they do tend to have is when they experience jealousy or they experience negative emotional challenges, as a general rule, general rule, um, these things do tend to be minimized in their intensity. Like somebody may experience who's secure jealousy, um, uh, like a four out of 10 or a three out of 10 instead of a, a nine out of 10, maybe in a, a similar situation. Um, and somebody will also be more likely to experience these things less frequently who's securely attached. So we may see that uh, an anxious preoccupied, let's say, for example, has the trauma response of jealousy circulating once every you know, week in the relationship with, with their partner versus a securely attached person might experience that a lot less often. And so what this allows is when our emotional intensity is minimized and when there's a, a lot less frequency. And then on top of that, when securely attached people tend to have ge general better modeling and know how to communicate their feelings or set a boundary or feel comfortable asking for their needs or feel comfortable being vulnerable and having a discussion to share their experience, it also increases the chances that this situation for the securely attached person will be resolved. And so these are the things we sort of want to model off of. And so when somebody's experiencing jealousy in a relationship, I think we first want to find out why. Like, what about this is creating jealousy? Is it, and it's usually going to fall into a couple of main categories. Number one, a line has actually been crossed. So let's say you're in a monogamous relationship, for example, and you say, we're not going to cheat in a relationship. That's part of the agreement we make. And then maybe we, you're in this relationship and maybe you find that, that your partner who you're in that relationship with is heavily interacting with somebody in a very flirtatious way, maybe on a night out. And maybe you're like, you know what, that was a, a line that's crossed. It may not have been like outright cheating, but there's a line that was crossed in terms of respect or, you know, whatever it might be, just a boundary that's essentially violated. And so in that case, that boundary would be communicated by the securely attached person. And that boundary wouldn't just end at the communication part. It would be communicated and then upheld. And what this really means is that you're going to see this person communicate a boundary and then also make sure that the boundary is not crossed again. And if it is, there will be consequences and not punishment, but consequences. Consequences really meaning that somebody will be able to say, that's inappropriate for me. And if that's going to continue to happen in the relationship, I don't want to be in a relationship where my boundaries are continuously violated. Now, they may not say it and they may not say it in a threatening way, but they'll know that internally and their behaviors will be in alignment with that. So for example, if somebody knows I want a relationship that empowers me and helps me to thrive, and then a boundary is being crossed, they're going to be reassessing the relationship. And over time, if that continues to happen, they'll generally move away to the point of a breakup. And it won't be from a place of anger and pointing the finger and getting all upset, but it will be from a place of articulating, clarifying the boundaries, seeing that through, um, you know, being open to discussion about it and trying to figure out the, the why the person isn't understanding the boundary. And then if the person is still not respecting it, then that person will reach that conclusion. So think of the securely attached process in a way as like taking an in information setting a boundary, communicating the boundary, seeing it through, trying to understand why somebody else isn't understanding it. And then if there just isn't resolution and if it's a really important boundary, then the person's gonna say, okay, this is not okay with me whatsoever. And so that would generally be a path that that, that might follow. Another 
big dynamic that we'll see here is when um, a securely attached person just has an unmet need. So sometimes they will feel jealous and, and this is possible less, less often, but absolutely possible. They'll feel jealous because they have an insecurity about something and maybe their, their partner or loved one isn't really doing anything that's crossing a line in a relationship but they're really interacting with somebody else, maybe not in a flirtatious way, maybe somebody's flirting with their partner or a loved one. And, and they would feel this sense of threat to the bond, because that's so much of what jealousy is, is a, is a perceived threat to the attachment bond, at least in our romantic interpersonal relationships. And then this experience happens where somebody's going, oh, I feel uncomfortable. And they would go towards their partner and loved one and say, I need some reassurance or I'm feeling uncomfortable. Can you, you know, stop interacting with that person so much? Or I have a need um, to just be reassured a little bit, or are we okay? Is everything good? And they would go and, and vulnerably open a line of communication about the context of the situation that's creating some of that jealousy. And so in that case, they're dealing with the unmet needs that are there and they're getting those needs met in healthy forms that require vulnerability and communication. And so these are some really important dynamics to be aware of. And I would say sort of as a tertiary thing to keep in mind with securely attached people, because they have less core wounds as a general rule, they're less likely to deeply personalize things. So for example, you're less likely to see a securely attached person, see somebody flirting with their loved one and, and not stopping it. Um, let's say their, their loved one isn't stopping that interaction from taking place. They're less likely to be like, oh, it's because I'm not good enough. It's because they want that person. They don't want me. I'm unworthy. They're less likely to story tell and create meaning and a narrative around it that diminishes themselves. And they're more likely to be like, oh, my partner probably doesn't want to upset that person or offend them. My partner's not setting a very good boundary. And they're less likely to make it sort of like this worst case scenario and sort of give benefit of the doubt to the situation a little bit. But that is not, and this is really important, that's not mutually exclusive to still conversating about it and setting a boundary themselves. So they, they, they won't just say, oh, it's fine and leave it when it doesn't feel okay for them. They'll say, okay, it's probably not my partner not wanting me or wanting to break up with me, but it still makes me feel uncomfortable. So I'll still go have a conversation. And this is really that sort of like balance and equilibrium that you're trying to achieve around communicating around difficult situations, specifically as they relate to, to this topic of jealousy. So hopefully that makes a lot of sense. If you want to do a way deeper dive into this and reprogram the core wounds that create jealousy, rebuild trust in relationships, if there's been some kind of big breach of trust in any form, um, or just do a deeper dive in general, you can check out our overcoming um, uh, jealousy and rebuilding broken trust course, there's a link in the description box below, and it will give you access for free for a seven day free trial to try out that course, as well as all the other different courses that are a part of the membership on our platform. So hopefully this makes a lot of sense. Hopefully that's a supportive resource for you. Thank you so much for being here and for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in tomorrow's video.